Assalamu alaikum, everyone. So I have a question for everyone. Um, I would like to know who here has ever done something or has ever been in a situation where they felt like, looking backwards, they felt they were selfish in that situation. So yeah, everyone should be raising their hands. <laughs> Um, and the reason why is because selfishness is a human trait. And this is something that we're trying to uh, overcome um, as submitters. We're trying to kill our egos, and I feel like uh, selfishness is um, part of the ego. So I think it would make sense to define what selfish means. Um, it is specifically when you are lacking consideration for others or you are uh, mainly concerned for your own personal profit or your pleasure. So it's this concept that, you know, uh, it's all about me and I don't care about the other people around me and I don't consider them. Um, and I thought that the synonyms, which I guess are not, is this working? Okay, so there's uh, synonyms uh, that I thought were um, worth mentioning. Uh, one of them, and there was like a reoccurring trend, uh, one of them was uh, egocentric, egotistic, self-centered, self-absorbed, self-obsessed, self-serving. Um, so all of these things, uh, there's like this reoccurring trend where there was ego and then there was also self, uh, which leads me to my next point, which uh, self is ego or ego is self. Um, and in fact, it was Satan that said, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so can anyone uh, tell me what ego means according to the introduction? Yes. So what does it mean to be arrogant? It means to have this, you know, over-exaggerated, um, you know, sense of self, self-importance. Um, you know, I am better. Um, in fact, it was the devil that said, I am better than he. You created me from fire and created him from clay. So it's this comparison. Um, and I specifically wanted to talk about society, um, especially, you know, Western culture, because we definitely focus on individualism. So it really is all about me. Uh, but another way to think about society is the way that the devil um, entices us. So, I was going to make sure that works. Uh, 4120, he promises them and entices them. What the devil promises is no more than an illusion. Um, so, we can look at society as basically an illusion. Um, and I think it's interesting to be conscious of what society is promoting. And one of the things that it promotes is this selfie culture. Um, you know, it's all about me, 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 me. Uh, and I think it's uh, interesting <laughs> because, you know, uh, we, we're basically, especially our generation, um, we take selfies and then we post them onto social media. And we, we post um, pictures of ourselves, of our lives, you know, the vacations that we go on, and we essentially glorify ourselves. Um, and I think that uh, it's interesting because uh, this is a very narcissistic type of way to go about. Um, what else? So society promotes uh, to be very obsessive about the way that we look. Uh, you know, it's like trendy to be slender or slim, and or it's trendy to be, you know, curvy and voluptuous. And, uh, you know, the, the way that we uh, wear our makeup or do our hair or uh, the clothes that we wear, all of these things, um, there's so much emphasis. And it can be very unhealthy to have this obsession about, you know, the way that you look because it's an illusion. We know that the real person is our soul and it's not necessarily um, what we look like. And so society, there's this illusion and we kind of get caught up in it. And we think that if we look a certain way that we can, you know, um, attract a guy or we can, you know, it, if I look a certain way, it will give me happiness or all these different illusions. Um, you know, specifically if you're a guy, you think that 
Um, if you buy a nice, you know, luxurious uh, sports car or something that, you know, your value will increase or you'll become happy or you will, in, you know, um, find, I don't know, a girl or something like that. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's really interesting um, because we know as submitters, it's, it's not like that. And society promotes gluttony um, and it promotes, uh, you know, not to be mindful and just to eat, you know, eat when you're hungry, eat when you're not hungry, um, carbs and sugar and, and stuff like that. Um, now, all of these things that I just mentioned are tools. And I feel like tools can be used or they can be abused. And as submitters, we can use these things to really grow our souls um, instead of boost our ego. Uh, for example, social media. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with social media. But I think at the end of the day, it really depends on what are your intentions. Um, you know, you can use social media to grow your soul. Maybe you can uh, glorify God by, you know, uh, posting a picture of a flower or to, you know, stand up for the truth. Um, for example, as submitters, you know, we appreciate our bodies. We thank God for our health. Um, and, you know, for example, a, a nice luxurious car, there's absolutely nothing wrong with, you know, having uh, a nice, you know, nice things in life. Um, but a submitter will purchase a car and glorify God and say, you know what, this is God's gift to me. Um, and, you know, they, they'll be driving the car and they will acknowledge that I am not the one driving this car. It is God that is controlling everything and the doer of everything. Um, and, you know, safely getting me from point A to point B. Uh, before, you know, you um, start the car, you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When you're looking out the windshield, you glorify God and His creations. Um, same thing goes with food. You know, there's nothing wrong with eating a burger. As long as you're eating in moderation and you're mindful and you're appreciative to God, um, you know, and you make sure that you don't waste. So there's all of these things. Um, and, you know... We're in this illusion and we can essentially grow our souls or we can, you know, uh, boost our ego, which leads me to my next point. Um, I specifically wanted to talk about a few different things. I know um, ego is pretty complex and there's a lot of things uh, that we can essentially talk about when it comes to ego. But I specifically wanted to focus on how argumentative the human being is. Um, and we see this all the time. Uh, you know, maybe in relationships, uh, you give power to yourself. You think that if I yell, um, you know, loud enough, or if I drive my point over and over and over again, or if I, um, you know, whatever it is, we're giving ourselves power. And we think that, you know, somehow we have the power to change the other person's mind. And so we constantly go back and forth. And so, um, you know, sometimes these peaceful debates will turn into arguments um, and like a, a back and forth because at that point, we are no longer growing our souls. We are boosting our egos. Um, another thing is to be profoundly unappreciative. Um, this one is particularly funny because we live in such a privileged um, country. And there's this thing online, it's called First World Problems. And it's basically glorifying, you know, how like profoundly unappreciative human beings are. Um, and I think it's interesting. Uh, there was actually something that I, I read online and it was basically, you know, you have this nice house and uh, you, uh, the maid comes to your house to, to clean and, you know, she's like vacuuming your room and you're, you're objecting because you can't hear, you know, your favorite TV show. So it's like you, you're so blessed that you go out of your way to complain. And I think that's essentially uh, what human beings do. And it's very easy to fall into that. Um, anxious, you basically don't trust in God. Um, you're uncertain about the future. And you know what? We, we don't know what the future is. So, you know, it's, it's very essential to, to trust in God. To be weak. You know, when somebody gives us a reminder, uh, we... We object, uh, we, we say no, we make uh, excuses that no, you know, actually no, you are wrong, even though you are giving me a reminder, but we have to realize that God is controlling that situation. So uh, 
if you get a reminder, know that reminders come from God. And so, you, you know, it, it's best to reflect uh, as opposed to, you know, get uh, upset. And so, you know, we all have weaknesses. And I specifically wanted to uh, focus on selfishness. So, um, in retrospect, what does God teach us uh, from from Quran? Anyone? Self selflessness. Um, exactly. So uh, I wanted to talk about this image really quick. So uh, this is specifically tailored to you know our personal life. So there is this you know the sun, and he's kind of like in his own element. Um, it doesn't really, he's not very concerned with uh, the reaction of his parents, and his parents are basically, um, you know, upset at him. So I think that this is really interesting because in our society, we, we tend to give so much importance to our friendships, you know? We would do anything for our best friend. But when it comes to our parents, we're like, oh, yeah, you know, that's my mom and dad. Um, and it's interesting because how many, you know, TV shows are there or how many movies are there where there's children that are like talking bad and like disrespecting their parents. And um, God specifically tells us to honor our parents. Um, and it's such an important commandment because it is, you know, the second commandment. Um, it's mentioned various times in the Quran and Bible and scripture. And it's, it's incredibly um, selfless, you know, to honor your parents because, you know, they raised you from infancy. Uh, you know, they provided for you by God's leave. Your mother uh, nurtured you. And so it just, it doesn't make sense to even talk back to your parents, you know, uh, nor shall you shout at them, right? Um, <laughs> Um, and it actually, it took me a while to realize this, um, but I think the older you get, the more appreciative you become of uh, the blessings, which is uh, your parents. Um, and it just, it makes sense not to shout at them, um, not to be annoyed at them. If they ask you to do something, you do it. And you you don't do it annoyingly or grudgingly. You you do it because you, you know, first of all, it's, it's God's commandment. You want to make sure that you're honoring your parents. Um, and we know that it's incredibly important because it makes you think, uh, what am I doing uh, to please my parents? So you're not necessarily just thinking about yourself, right? How many times do you wake up on a Saturday morning, for example, and, um, you know, you have no plans and you're like, you know what, I'm just going to clean the whole house or I'm going to make my parents breakfast. Right. And it's not Mother's Day or it's not Father's Day. Like, how many times do we think to, to just do something nice for our parents? Because our parents have been constantly doing, you know, so many things for us, you know. Um, and now I want to focus on com the community aspect. OK, so. <laughs> So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, how are my actions affecting my community? Okay, And I specifically wanted to focus on a few verses. So um, you shall force yourself to be with those who worship their Lord day and night. And I specifically wanted to mention uh, the word force. What does it mean to force yourself to do something? You know, you force yourself to get out of bed because you don't want to get out of bed. And the same thing goes, it's, it's, when you want, it's, it's when you don't want to go to Quran study because you're either lazy or you, um, I don't know, you had a bad day or something, you just don't feel like going. But this is when God commands you to force yourself to be with believers because you might go to Quran study and learn something. You know, maybe one person may say something and, and you might really, you know, think, wow, that was a per profound statement. And you think about it all week long. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, sometimes uh, submitters will text you or whatever it is and they'll, they'll ask you to hang out. 
and you'll you'll just try to make up excuses. You know, uh, you'll say, "Well, I I can't wake up, you know, early in the morning, um, or I I just don't want to, or I don't have money to spend, or um, whatever excuse it is. Like I I don't really like hiking or whatever it is, for example." Um, <laughs> And, and you know, that whole time that you're coming up with all of these excuses, you're really just feeding into your own personal desires. But when you force yourself to do something, it's not because you want to do it, you know, it's because of God's commandments. Um, another verse that I wanted to focus on is, you shall be clean and dress nicely when you go to masjid. Um, and so... This is something that we always have to understand. Well, first of all, it's God's commandment, right? So we have to do this. Um, but when you dress nicely for masjid, not only are you respecting God and respecting his place of worship, but you are also giving respect to yourself and you are respecting others and you're being considerate of others. Um, think of, you know, if I... If I was, uh, if I had smelly hair and, you know, I just came from the gym and I, I, I went to uh, the masjid and I essentially just victimized people, like people that I was sitting next to, like I, I wouldn't be considerate, right? I wouldn't be considerate of the person sitting, um, you know, to the left and right of me. Um, and so, you know, this is why I, I always say like God's laws are perfect because in every light that you think about them, you realize, wow, um, if I just listen to God, he knows what is best for me. He is most wise. Okay, so my last point um, is how do our actions affect society? Um, and I specifically wanted to talk about um, homosexuality because, you know, it's kind of like this like new trend to accept everyone. Um, and I was kind of going over the Quran and, and I realized a lot of the gross sins, um, are those sins that really victimize, um, people in society. For example, um, drunk driving, you know, you, you drink alcohol because of your own personal desires because you want to have fun and then you go and, um, kill someone, you know, you drive and you kill someone essentially. Um, so we always have to think like, how are our, um, actions affecting society. So <clears throat> with so, uh, homosexuality, right, there's like two people because of their own personal desires, they, they want to, you know, um, get married, <laughs> right? And it's interesting because it just, it doesn't work out. Um, let's say this couple wants to have uh, a family. First of all, they cannot biologically have a family. So they, you know, go out and adopt and those children already are already denied of a father or a mother. Um, and in retrospect, when you think about marriage, um, the way that it's supposed to be, which is a union between a man and a woman, you just really appreciate, you know, uh, how complementary it is when a, a male and a female, they come together. And we know that as submitters, the only way to have a successful marriage is when two people, they love God the most and they fear God the most. And they want to, you know, come together as a team to, um, you know, overcome weaknesses and give each other reminders and stuff like that. And this is why it works. When they have a, a family, they raise their children to be these righteous people so that they can go out and, and be, you know, citizens and go into the workforce and set a good example. Um, so... So we have to really think about uh, the bigger picture and not just focus on ourselves um, because it's very easy to, to get into that. So, um, you know, I think if, if there's one thing, uh, one aspect of my speech that I, I want you guys to take away from, from all of this is, you know, in, in every single way, whether it's like, you know, small or big, how are my actions affecting other people? All right. Uh, and that is it. Thank you. Mashallah. So, okay, we're back on schedule. So if we do have any uh, comments or questions for Nahal, 
We'll take some of those. And then if we finish that up, we can do some comments and questions for the previous speeches too, inshallah. So we'll start off with um, Elham. So I noticed in your last picture, you had a picture of uh, Toronto. What's your beef with Toronto? Why didn't you post a picture of San Francisco? I mean, <laughs> I just wanted to find a picture that represented society. So I thought, why not, you know, city life? Apparently I was wrong. That wasn't Toronto, sorry. I should have okay. verified. Um, Nahal, I just wanted to ask you, um, you and I have talked about this before, I think, but um, what was your conclusion on this? God says, worry about your own neck. And then God says in two places in the Quran that selfishness is condemned. Uh, how do you reconcile those two things? I think there's a difference between worrying about your own neck and going about your life just focusing on yourself and kind of not being considerate about other people. I, I find it very different um, because essentially we all know that we are responsible for our own neck. So it only makes sense to you know, do what's right. Um, but it's when we victimize others, I think that's where we go wrong. 